Welcome to the final experiments. The final experiments are a preponderance of evidence against flat earth. And the final experiments all confirm the globe. These experiments were all conducted in December of 2024, when four flat earthers and four globers went on a journey with me, Will Duffy, to Antarctica. We spent time in Punta Arenas, Chile, which is at the southern tip of South America, before flying to Antarctica. This entire trip allowed us to conduct historic experiments and collect data firsthand from an area of the world that few people will ever have the opportunity to visit and do this themselves. Prior to my announcement of the final experiment in early 2024, a vast majority of flat earthers, with very few exceptions, promoted the Gleason's map of the world, which is an azimuthal equidistant projection. This map had the North Pole at the center and pushed the South to the outer perimeter of the known world. This made Antarctica an ice wall perimeter around all the world's continents, and it served to hold in all the world's oceans as flat earthers claim water must have a container. It also extends the entire Southern hemisphere into a larger and larger area where on the globe, everything south of the equator gets closer and closer together. This made being at the southern tip of South America and in Antarctica the perfect place to test flat earth claims and also confirm the globe predictions. Every single flat earth claim failed. Every flat earth prediction was demonstrably false. The final experiments are meant to be taken collectively, just like evidence in a court of law. Undoubtedly, flat earthers will attempt to discredit individual experiments we did while at the same time ignoring the rest. If they cannot provide an accurate map of the world and a working model that can account for the results of all of these final experiments collectively, that is because we don't live on a flat earth. If they try to say these experiments are not actual experiments, but only observations, that is because they cannot reconcile our findings with a flat earth. If they say that flat earth does not make predictions, that is because making accurate and testable predictions based on a flat earth is impossible because a flat earth does not exist. You cannot make and test predictions based on something that is not real. Maps of the globe exist because the globe exists. The entire globe model exists because the globe exists. Countless globe predictions come true every day, and countless future globe predictions will continue to happen exactly as predicted because the globe exists. If a flat earther tells you that there is no accurate flat earth map, and there is no working flat earth model and that they don't make predictions, that is an implicit admission that a flat earth does not exist because you can map things that exist. You can model things that exist and you can make very specific predictions that come true based on something that actually exists and is testable. I created the final experiment to give both sides flat earth and globe an equal opportunity to prove their side. Only the globe side returned with evidence supporting their position. The globe side returned with tons of concrete evidence that both accurately matches the globe model and also falsifies flat earth. This brings us to the 24 hour moon in Antarctica. A 24 hour moon is a moon that is visible in the sky all day and never disappears from view below the horizon. It's visible in the sky all 24 hours. Most flat earthers are completely unaware of the 24 hour moon in Antarctica. My flat earth friend, Wendy, who many of you know is responsible for getting me into this flat earth debate in the first place, told me something right before I left for Antarctica. She said, I don't know where you came up with the moon idea, but I've never heard of a 24 hour moon anywhere from anybody 
until I watched your video. The only flat earther I can find that was even aware of the 24 hour moon before the final experiment is David Weiss, better known as Flat Earth Dave. And here is what he had to say. Right? So the moon goes in and out every two weeks, right? You know, there's a 24 hour moon in the north, but not a 24 hour moon in the south. Flat Earth Dave says there is not a 24 hour moon in the south for the same reason he and other flat earthers claimed there is not a 24 hour sun in the south because it cannot work on a flat earth. They were all wrong about the 24 hour sun and flat earth Dave is also wrong about the 24 hour moon. The globe predicted a 24 hour moon in Antarctica when flat earthers said there would not be a 24 hour moon. Because we live on a globe, the globe prediction was accurate. The moon can stay above the horizon for up to two weeks at a time in Antarctica. Anthony Powell, who is best known for his award-winning documentary, Antarctica, A Year on Ice, has captured multiple time lapses of the 24-hour sun in Antarctica. And I am extremely excited to release to the public for the very first time Anthony Powell's time lapse of the 24 hour moon in Antarctica, which he captured during the Antarctic winter at Scott Base. If a flat earther tells you that a time lapse is not a video and therefore doesn't count as evidence of the 24 hour moon, remind them that a video is a series of pictures as is a time lapse. And remember that they are only using that excuse because they cannot reconcile a 24 hour moon in Antarctica with a flat earth. So they will come up with other ways to attempt to dismiss the reality of the 24 hour moon but these will fail as they have already been shown to be completely wrong on the 24 hour sun in Antarctica as well. Let the record show that the globe prediction was correct and the flat earth prediction was wrong. But there's more to the story here. Globe predictions are precise and detailed again because the globe exists. You can only make accurate predictions that can be tested and verified with something that actually exists. Flat Earth cannot make these types of predictions because a flat Earth does not exist. The globe model not only has a 24 hour moon in Antarctica, but also a 24 hour moon in the Arctic, in the North. This will be a common theme in this series, where we will see a beautiful symmetry between the Northern and Southern hemispheres of the globe, a symmetry that is impossible on a flat earth. And the globe model says that the 24 hour moon in the north will move through the sky from left to right, while the 24 hour moon in the south in Antarctica will move through the sky from right to left. And this is another common theme that will emerge in this series, a type of mirror effect when comparing observations in the northern hemisphere with observations in the southern hemisphere. Again, something that makes perfect sense on a globe, but would be impossible on a flat earth. But the globe model does not stop there. 
The GLOBE model also predicts the exact elevation angle of the moon based on where someone is in Antarctica and what time of day it is, including the up and down wave motion pattern throughout the day. And if that's not enough, the GLOBE model also says that at the geographic poles, the South Pole and North Pole, the moon's elevation angle will not have any visible change in a 24-hour period, meaning no wave pattern. And that is exactly what we see at the South Pole. Compare the time lapse from Anthony Powell that we just watched, where the moon moves through the sky up and down in a wave pattern, with this time lapse from Robert Schwartz, which was taken over consecutive days at the South Pole. As you can see, the moon did not move up and down through the sky each day in a wave pattern like it did at Scott Base. Yet both of these time lapses were taken in Antarctica. And still, the globe accurately accounts for the moon's elevation angle changes at Scott Base, in addition to accurately accounting for the lack of elevation angle changes at the South Pole. Because the globe exists, it can be modeled by anyone and will accurately predict what will be seen at any geographic location. This is impossible to do on a flat earth because a flat earth does not exist. All data points perfectly match the globe. A 24 hour moon in the south that moves through the sky from right to left with a 24 hour moon in the north that moves through the sky in the opposite direction and then the moon's exact elevation angle based on where the viewer is standing in Antarctica and what time of day it is. And finally, the lack of visible change in the moon's elevation angle at the South Pole, which is only 750 miles from Scott Base. Flat Earth cannot account for any of this. I predict that Flat Earthers will attempt to try and make sense of the 24-hour moon in Antarctica by shining a flashlight on a plastic dome. But this will fail for many reasons. First, the moon is not a bright light like the sun. And so appealing to things like coffee cup caustic and reflections off of a dome won't work with the moon, especially with crescent moons like this one captured by Robert Schwartz in Antarctica. <music> Despite the fact that shining a flashlight on a plastic dome is not applicable with the moon, flat earthers will still undoubtedly shine a flashlight on a plastic dome in an attempt to create a 24-hour moon on a flat earth. And they will film from the outside of the dome, hoping you won't notice. They would need to show a video from inside the plastic dome, not outside as there are no observers outside a dome, and that video inside the dome would need to have a 24 hour moon in the south where the moon phase is vertically flipped for observers north of the equator and where the moon moves through the sky in the opposite direction in the south while the flashlight continues moving in the same direction as the moon in the north. And it would need to have the moon's elevation angle making an up and down wave pattern for observers in Antarctica and the moon's elevation angle not visibly changing for those further south, all at the same time.
If you didn't follow all of that, that's okay. It's not possible on a flat earth. And all of this together simultaneously will never be modeled because again, you can't model something with this amount of precision and make these very specific, accurate predictions concerning something that doesn't exist. It's only possible to do this with something that is real. And because the globe is real, every single globe prediction concerning the 24 hour moon has been confirmed. And the flat earth prediction of no 24 hour moon in the South was completely false. Please watch our other experiments, which are part of these final experiments where you will see results that confirm the globe and results that would be impossible on a flat earth. And please share this video with anyone you know who is a flat earther or considering flat earth. As Jesus said in John 8:32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free.